Chapter 1. Early Life Steve Jobs, born on February 24, 1955, in San Francisco, California, had a unique childhood that shaped his future. His biological parents, Joanne Schiebel and Abdul Fattah Jandali, were not married and decided to give him up for adoption. Paul and Clara Jobs, a couple from Mountain View, California, adopted him. They named him Stephen Paul Jobs. Paul Jobs, a mechanic and carpenter, shared his love for mechanics and working with his hands with Steve. Clara, an accountant, was a caring mother. They lived in a neighborhood filled with engineers working on electronics and gadgets in their garages. This environment sparked Steve's interest in electronics and mechanics at a young age. As a child, Steve was curious and intelligent, but often bored in school. He was a prankster, sometimes causing trouble. His parents tried to keep him challenged and engaged. They noticed his interest in electronics and encouraged it. His father showed him how to take apart and rebuild electronics in their garage, a skill that stayed with Steve throughout his life. Jobs also had a passion for simplicity and design, influenced by his father's craftsmanship. This passion was evident in Apple products, known for their sleek and user-friendly design. During his school years, Stevie struggled with formal education. He was not interested in traditional schooling and often found it unchallenging and uninteresting. However, he was very talented in subjects he was passionate about, like mathematics and science. His fourth grade teacher, Imogene Teddy Hill, noticed his potential and encouraged him. She made a deal with Steve. She would give him five dollars for every book he finished. This helped Steve develop a love for learning. In 1968, when Steve was 13 years old, he met 18-year-old Stephen Wozniak, a talented and skilled engineer. They shared a love for electronics and pranks. This meeting was the start of a long and significant friendship. Wozniak later co-founded Apple Inky with Jobs. Jobs' early life was marked by experiences that shaped his creative and innovative spirit. His adoption, the influence of his parents, his neighborhood, his struggles in traditional education, and his early friendship with Wozniak were key factors in his journey. These experiences laid the foundation for his future achievements. Steve Jobs' childhood story is not just about a boy interested in electronics. It's about a young mind shaped by a blend of experiences leading to the creation of one of the most successful companies in the world, Apple Inc. Steve Jobs' education and early interests played a crucial role in his journey to becoming a visionary leader in technology. After high school, Jobs enrolled at Reed College in Portland, Oregon in 1972. Reed was a liberal arts college known for its creative and non-traditional approach to education. Jobs, however, found college expensive and did not want to spend his parents' hard-earned money. So, he made a bold decision to drop out after just six months. But he continued to audit, attend without getting credit, classes that interested him, particularly a course in calligraphy. He learned about different types of fonts and what made good typography. This knowledge would later influence Apple's distinctive typography and design aesthetics. During this period, Jobs also explored different life experiences. He experimented with LSD, a powerful hallucinogenic drug, and said it was a profound experience that significantly influenced his thinking. He traveled to India in 1974, seeking spiritual enlightenment and embraced Buddhism. His experiences in India, his spiritual pursuits, and his interest in simplicity and intuition also shaped his creative and philosophical approach to business and design. Jobs' early interest in electronics continued to grow. He was fascinated by the emerging field of personal computing. He and Steve Wozniak, a friend from his youth, attended meetings of the Homebrew Computer Club. 
This club was a gathering of electronics hobbyists who shared ideas about computers. These meetings inspired Jobs and Wozniak to think about creating a computer that was easy to use for everyday people. In 1976, Jobs and Wozniak started Apple Computer Inc. in Jobs' parents' garage. They worked hard to create their first product, the Apple I Computer. Jobs was responsible for marketing and had the vision of selling the computer to a wider audience. He believed that computers should not just be for experts or hobbyists, but for everyone. This vision was revolutionary at the time. Jobs' education and early life were unconventional. He dropped out of college, traveled to India, and was interested in design, spirituality, and computing. These experiences formed a unique foundation for his approach to business and innovation. Jobs was not just interested in making computers. He wanted to make them beautifully designed, easy to use, and accessible to everyone. This vision guided him throughout his career and was key to the success of Apple. Steve Jobs' story shows how diverse experiences and interests can lead to groundbreaking ideas and achievements. His journey from a curious and unconventional student to a pioneering technology leader is a testament to the power of following one's passions and thinking differently. Chapter 2 Chapter Structure Wozniak, older than Jobs by five years, was already making a name for himself as a brilliant engineer. He had designed his own version of a computer, which was an extraordinary feat at that time. Jobs, with his keen eye for potential and marketing, was fascinated by Wozniak's skills and ideas. Their friendship grew as they spent time together working on various projects and sharing ideas. They both had a rebellious streak and loved to challenge the status quo, which bonded them further. Jobs admired Wozniak's ability to create complex electronic devices from scratch, and Wozniak appreciated Jobs' energy and entrepreneurial spirit. One of their first collaborations was on a small-scale project called the Blue Box. This device allowed users to make long-distance phone calls for free, by emulating the tones used by a telephone operator system. While illegal, the project was a critical learning experience for them. It showed Jobs the potential of selling electronic products and gave him confidence in his partnership with Wozniak. The Blue Box Venturi was short-lived but significant. It was during this time that Jobs began to envision the possibilities of what they could achieve together. He saw that computers, which were large and complicated at the time, could be made smaller, user-friendly, and accessible to a broader audience. Their friendship and collaboration laid the foundation for what would become Apple. Jobs had the vision and drive, while Wozniak had the technical expertise. Together, they were the perfect team to start a revolution in personal computing. The meeting of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak was more than just a chance encounter. It was a pivotal moment that changed the course of technology. It brought together two minds that complemented each other perfectly, each contributing what the other lacked. This partnership was at the heart of Apple's birth and its subsequent success. It's a testament to the power of collaboration and shared dreams in achieving extraordinary goals. The story of how Jobs and Wozniak met and worked together is not just an interesting part of tech history. It's a source of inspiration, showing how determination, vision, and teamwork can lead to world-changing innovations. Their first product was the Apple Y computer. Wozniak designed this computer, and it was unlike anything else at the time. Most computers then were large and complicated, but the Apple I was smaller and easier to use. Jobs saw the potential to sell it to a wider market. They both worked hard in Jobs' parents' garage in Los Altos, California. This garage became the legendary birthplace of Apple. Jobs was in charge of selling the Apple I. He convinced a local computer store, the Byte Shop, to order 50 units. This was a big challenge because they needed money for parts. 
Jobs solved this problem by finding suppliers who would sell parts on credit and a buyer who paid in advance. This showed his ability to think creatively and take risks. The success of the Apple I was just the beginning. In 1977, they introduced the Apple II. It was one of the first successful personal computers and made Apple a major player in the computer industry. The Apple II was more advanced than the Apple I and had color graphics, a first at the time. It became very popular and was a significant breakthrough. Starting Apple in a garage shows how big ideas can come from small beginnings. Jobs and Wozniak didn't have much money or resources, but they had a vision and determination. They worked hard and took risks, overcoming many challenges to make their dream a reality. The story of Apple's birth is inspiring. It shows that with innovation, hard work, and a willingness to think differently, anything is possible. Jobs and Wozniak's journey from a garage to a global company is not just about technology. It's about the power of human creativity and perseverance. It's a story that encourages us to believe in our ideas and to pursue our dreams, no matter how ambitious they may seem. The garage where Apple began is a symbol of what can be achieved when we dare to dream big and work hard to make those dreams come true. Chapter 3. The First Apple Computer In 1976, Steve Wozniak, a brilliant engineer, had designed the Apple I computer. It was a significant achievement because at that time, computers were large, expensive and not user-friendly. Wozniak's design was different. It was compact, affordable and much easier to use. He presented his invention at a meeting of the Homebrew Computer Club, a local group of computer enthusiasts in Silicon Valley. The audience was amazed by what they saw. Steve Jobs, always with an eye for potential, immediately saw the commercial possibilities of Wozniak's creation. He suggested they should start a company to sell the computer. Jobs believed that computers were not just for computer experts, but for everyone. This was a new and exciting idea. They faced many challenges in developing the Apple Eye. They had limited resources and had to find creative ways to get the parts and money they needed. Jobs sold his Volkswagen van and Wozniak sold his beloved scientific calculator to raise the initial funds. Jobs' persuasive skills also played a crucial role. He convinced local electronics suppliers to give them parts on credit and secured an order from the Byte Shop a local computer store, for 50 units of the Apple I. The Apple I was different from other computers of the time. It came as a fully assembled circuit board, but users still needed to provide a case, power supply, keyboard, and display. Despite these requirements, it was a hit in the tech enthusiast community. It was an affordable way for people to have their own personal computer. The launch of the Apple I was a significant milestone. It showed that there was a market for personal computers and that they could be both accessible and affordable. The Apple I was not just a product. It was a statement about the future of computing. It was the start of Apple's journey to revolutionize the technology world. Jobs and Wozniak worked tirelessly in Jobs's garage, assembling the Apple I units by hand. This hands-on approach was a hallmark of Apple's early days and showed their commitment to their vision. The success of the Apple I paved the way for future innovations and set the stage for Apple to become a major force in the computer industry. The development and launch of the Apple I is a story of innovation, vision and determination. It highlights how Jobs and Wozniak's partnership, their unique skills, and their willingness to take risks led to the creation of a product that changed the world. It's an inspiring tale that shows how a small idea can grow into something that impacts the lives of millions of people. The Apple I was more than just a computer. 
It was the beginning of a new era in personal technology. In the journey of creating the first Apple computer, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak faced many challenges, but also enjoyed significant successes. This part of their story is a tale of overcoming obstacles and achieving great things. One of the biggest challenges was financial. Starting a business is hard, especially without much money. Jobs and Wozniak had to be very creative to get the parts they needed for the Apple I. They used their personal savings and sold things that were important to them. Jobs even convinced suppliers to give them parts on credit, promising to pay once they sold the computers. Another challenge was competition. In the 1970s, there were already big companies making computers. These companies had a lot of money and resources. Apple was just a small startup working out of a garage. But Jobs and Wozniak had a unique vision. They wanted to make computers that were easy for everyone to use, not just experts. This idea was new and different. Getting people to believe in their vision was also a challenge. Many people thought computers were just for businesses or scientists. Jobs and Wozniak had to work hard to convince people that everyone could benefit from owning a computer. They showed their computer at local clubs and talked to anyone who would listen about their ideas. Despite these challenges, the Apple I was a success. The computer was popular with computer enthusiasts and hobbyists. It was one of the first computers people could use right out of the box, and it was more affordable than many other computers at the time. This success was a big deal for Jobs and Wozniak. It proved their idea was good and that there was a market for their product. The success of the Apple I led to more opportunities. It gave Jobs and Wozniak the confidence to keep going and to keep improving their products. In 1977, they released the Apple II. This was an even bigger success. It was one of the first computers with color graphics, and it was very popular with both businesses and regular people. The Apple II made Apple a well-known name in the world of computers. The challenges Jobs and Wozniak faced in the early days of Apple taught them important lessons. They learned to be resourceful, to believe in their ideas, and to keep working hard even when things were tough. Their success showed that with determination and creativity, you can overcome obstacles and achieve great things. The story of the first Apple computer is not just about technology. It's about two friends who had a big dream and worked together to make it come true. It's a story of challenges and successes, and it's an inspiration to anyone who wants to make something new and change the world. Chapter 4. Apple's Growth After the success of the Apple Y, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were ready to take their vision further. They wanted to create a computer that was even more user-friendly and accessible to a wider audience. This led to the development of the Apple II. Launched in 1977, the Apple II was a revolutionary product. It was one of the first successful personal computers and played a key role in the computer revolution of the late 1970s and early 1980s. Unlike the Apple I, the Apple II came fully assembled and ready to use. It had a built-in keyboard, a case, and the ability to connect to a color monitor. These features were groundbreaking at the time and made the Apple II appealing to a broader range of customers, not just computer hobbyists. One of the most significant innovations of the Apple II was its color graphics. This was a major advancement in personal computing. Before the Apple II, most computers only displayed text in black and white. The color graphics of the Apple II made it possible to play games, create art, and use educational software in a way that was never possible before. This made the computer much more fun and engaging for users. The Apple II was also more powerful than the Apple Y. It had more memory and could do more complex tasks. This made it useful for businesses 
as well as for personal use. Schools started using the Apple II as a teaching tool, which introduced many young people to computing. The success of the Apple II was a turning point for Apple. It transformed the company from a small startup into a serious player in the technology industry. The sales of the Apple II brought in significant revenue, which allowed Apple to grow and develop even more innovative products. Steve Jobs' role in the success of the Apple II cannot be overstated. His vision for what personal computing could be drove the development of the Apple II. He was involved in every aspect of the product, from design to marketing. Jobs believed that computers should be not only functional, but also beautiful and enjoyable to use. This philosophy was evident in the design of the Apple II. The introduction of the Apple II is a story of innovation, vision, and success. It shows how Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak's commitment to making user-friendly and accessible computers changed the world. The Apple II was more than just a computer. It was a symbol of the potential of personal computing and a testament to the power of a great idea. The success of the Apple II set the stage for the future of Apple and the personal computing industry. The impact of the Apple II on the personal computer industry was enormous and changed the way people viewed and used computers. Before the Apple II, computers were mostly seen as tools for businesses or hobbies for enthusiasts. They were large, expensive and complicated to use. The Apple II changed all that. It was a computer for everyone, easy to use and affordable. This opened up a whole new market for personal computers and sparked a revolution in the industry. The Apple II was not just a success for Apple. It inspired other companies to create their own personal computers. It showed that there was a huge demand for computers in homes, schools and small businesses. This led to a boom in the personal computer industry in the 1980s. Many new companies started making personal computers, and the competition drove rapid innovation and improvement in technology. One of the biggest impacts of the Apple II was how it made computers accessible to ordinary people. Before the Apple II, most people thought computers were too complex and not useful for everyday tasks. But the Apple II showed that computers could be fun and helpful for a variety of uses. People started using computers for things like word processing, managing finances, playing games and learning. This changed the way people lived and worked and brought about a new era of personal technology. The success of the Apple II also had a big impact on education. Schools began to use computers as a teaching tool and many students were introduced to computing through the Apple II. This had a lasting effect on education and technology. It inspired a generation of young people to learn about computers and helped create a skilled workforce for the growing technology industry. Apple's approach to the Apple II also set new standards for design and user experience in the computer industry. The Apple II was not just functional. It was also well designed and easy to use. This focus on design and user experience became a hallmark of Apple's products and influenced the entire industry. Other companies started to pay more attention to how their products looked and worked, leading to better and more user-friendly computers. The introduction of the Apple II marked the beginning of a new chapter in the history of technology. It transformed Apple into a major player in the computer industry and set the stage for the company's future successes. The Apple II's impact on the personal computer industry is a testament to Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak's vision and innovation. They didn't just create a product, they started a movement that changed the world. The story of the Apple II is a story of how a great idea combined with passion and hard work, can have a profound impact on the world. Chapter 5. Innovation and Setbacks 
After the success of the Apple II, Steve Jobs set his sights on something even more revolutionary. He wanted to create a computer that was not just more powerful and easy to use, but also affordable for everyday people. This vision led to the development of the Macintosh. The journey began in the late 1970s when Jobs visited Xerox Park, a research center in Palo Alto, California. There, he saw a computer with a graphical user interface, GUI, for the first time. This computer used icons, windows, and a pointing device called a mouse. Jobs immediately realized the potential of this technology. He imagined a computer that used a GUI, which would be much easier and more intuitive for people to use than typing commands. Back at Apple, Jobs started a project to create a new computer using these ideas. This project was named Macintosh, after a type of Apple. Jobs assembled a team of the best and brightest engineers and designers at Apple. He wanted the Macintosh to be special, so he encouraged his team to think differently and be innovative. The team worked in a small building away from the rest of Apple, which they called the Macintosh factory. They even flew a pirate flag over the building, symbolizing their independence and rebellious spirit. Creating the Macintosh was not easy. The team faced many technical challenges. They had to figure out how to make the graphical user interface work smoothly and how to fit all the necessary components into a small and affordable machine. Jobs was known for his perfectionism and often pushed his team hard to achieve his vision. This led to tension and long hours of work, but also to incredible innovation. In 1984, after years of hard work, the Macintosh was finally launched. It was unveiled in a dramatic advertisement during the Super Bowl, which caught the attention of the entire country. The Macintosh was unlike any other computer on the market. It was small, had a built-in screen, and used a mouse. The graphical user interface made it easy for anyone to use, even if they had no experience with computers. However, the journey of the Macintosh had its setbacks. The computer was initially expensive, which made it hard for many people to buy. It also faced tough competition from other companies, especially IBM. Despite these challenges, the Macintosh was a critical success. It changed the way people thought about computers and set new standards for usability and design. The story of the Macintosh is a story of vision, determination and innovation. It shows how Steve Jobs and his team at Apple were willing to take risks and think differently to create something truly groundbreaking. The Macintosh was more than just a computer, it was a symbol of what technology could be accessible, beautiful, and empowering. It laid the foundation for many of Apple's future successes and forever changed the technology industry. This period was marked by both innovation and significant setbacks. After the launch of the Macintosh in 1984, despite its groundbreaking technology, the computer did not sell as well as expected. It was innovative, but its high price made it less accessible to the wider market Apple was targeting. This led to tensions within Apple, particularly between Jobs and the company's board of directors and CEO, John Scully, whom Jobs himself had brought into Apple. The disagreements centered around the future direction of Apple. Jobs had a vision for the company that focused on the Macintosh and its unique approach to computing, However, the board and Scully had different ideas. They were concerned about the Macintosh's sales and the overall performance of the company. This difference in vision led to a power struggle within Apple. In 1985, the situation reached a breaking point. At a dramatic board meeting, the board sided with Scully and removed Jobs from his managerial duties over the Macintosh division. This was a huge blow to Jobs. Feeling sidelined and no longer in control of the company he had helped create, he made a difficult decision. Jobs resigned from Apple and decided to start a new venture. Leaving Apple was a significant setback for Jobs. 
It was a company he had built from the ground up, and it was hard for him to leave. However, this setback also marked the beginning of a new chapter in his life. Jobs often said that being fired from Apple was the best thing that could have happened to him. It freed him to enter one of the most creative periods of his life. After leaving Apple, Jobs founded Next, a company that focused on producing high-end computers for the education sector. He also invested in a small graphics company that would later become Pixar Animation Studios. Pixar would go on to revolutionize the animation industry with hits like Toy Story. Jobs' departure from Apple was a low point in his career, but it was not the end. It was a period of personal and professional growth. He learned valuable lessons about business, leadership and himself during this time. These experiences would later help him upon his return to Apple. The story of Jobs leaving Apple teaches an important lesson about resilience and the power of perseverance. It shows that setbacks can lead to new opportunities and that even in difficult times, innovation and creativity can thrive. Jobs' journey after Apple is a testament to his character and vision. It's a reminder that sometimes, to move forward, one must take a step back. His time away from Apple was not just a break. It was a period of transformation that prepared him for the incredible successes he would achieve in the future. Chapter 6 Next and Pixar After leaving Apple in 1985, Jobs was ready for a new challenge. He decided to start another computer company, Next, with the vision of creating powerful computers for education and businesses. Jobs invested a significant portion of his own money into Next. He was determined to build a computer that was not only technologically advanced, but also beautifully designed. The focus was on creating a computer that would change the way people work and learn. Jobs brought together a team of talented engineers and designers, many of whom he had worked with at Apple. The development of the next computer was marked by Jobs' attention to detail and insistence on perfection. He wanted everything to be right, from the powerful software to the elegant, cube-shaped design of the hardware. The next computer was designed to be a complete system, with sophisticated graphics and sound capabilities, and an operating system that was ahead of its time. However, creating such an advanced computer was expensive and time-consuming. The next computer was launched in 1988, but its high price made it inaccessible to a large part of the market it was intended for. Despite its technological excellence, the sales of the next computer were not as high as expected. This was a challenging time for Jobs and his company. Despite these challenges, the experience of building Next was valuable. Jobs learned important lessons about business, product development and leadership. Next's software in particular was a significant achievement. The operating system developed by Next would later become the foundation for Apple's Mac OS X. The story of Next is not just about a computer. It's about Steve Jobs' journey of starting over and pushing the boundaries of technology. It shows his ability to persevere through difficulties and continue to innovate. Next may not have been a commercial success, but it played a crucial role in the development of future technologies and in Jobs' own story. Founding Next Computer after leaving Apple was a bold move by Jobs. It showed his unwavering commitment to his vision of computing and his belief in the power of technology to make a difference. The experience at Next refined Jobs' skills as a leader and an innovator. It was a period of growth that set the stage for his triumphant return to Apple in the future. The next chapter in Jobs' life is a testament to the fact that setbacks can lead to new paths of innovation and success. It's a story of determination, creativity, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. In 1986, he bought the Graphics Group, later known as Pixar, from Lucasfilm for $5 million. 
and invested another $5 million into the company. Pixar was a small computer animation studio at the time, but Jobs saw potential in its technology and the creative talent of its people. He believed that computer-generated animation was the future of filmmaking. Jobs' vision for Pixar was to create the first computer-animated feature film. This was a bold and risky idea, as no one had done this before. The early years of Pixar were challenging. The studio focused on making short films and commercials, slowly building its reputation in the animation industry. Jobs' initial investment in Pixar was not immediately profitable, and he had to invest more money to keep the studio going. However, he continued to support Pixar's creative and technological endeavors, believing in the studio's potential. Pixar's breakthrough came with the release of Toy Story in 1995. Toy Story was the first feature-length film to be made entirely with computer animation. The film was a huge success, both critically and financially. It won several awards and set new standards for animated movies. Toy Story was a game-changer, proving that computer animation could create engaging, emotional, and visually stunning films. Jobs' involvement with Pixar changed the animation industry. Under his leadership, Pixar became a leader in computer animation. The studio went on to produce a series of successful films, such as Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Up. Each of these films was not only a technological marvel, but also a storytelling masterpiece. The success of Pixar also had a significant impact on Steve Jobs' career. It showed a different side of his talent and vision. Jobs was known for his work in technology, but Pixar allowed him to contribute to the world of art and entertainment. Pixar's success also brought financial stability to Jobs, especially during the challenging times at Next. In 2006, Disney purchased Pixar for $7.4 billion, and Jobs became Disney's largest single shareholder. This acquisition was a testament to the incredible success of Pixar and Jobs' role in it. The story of Pixar and its success is a testament to Steve Jobs' vision, persistence, and belief in the power of creativity. It's a story that goes beyond technology and enters the realm of art and storytelling. Jobs' journey with Pixar shows that with innovation, passion, and the right team, anything is possible. Pixar's success under Jobs' guidance is not just a chapter in the history of animation, it's a story of how technology and creativity can come together to create something truly magical. Chapter 7 – Return to Apple During this period, Apple continued to innovate and released several new products. However, none of these products had the same impact as the earlier Apple D2 or the Macintosh. The company tried to expand its market with different models of Macintosh computers and other technology products, but these efforts were not always successful. Apple faced tough competition from companies like Microsoft and IBM, which dominated the personal computer market with their Windows operating system and affordable PCs. One of the main challenges Apple faced was maintaining its identity and vision. Jobs had been a driving force at Apple, pushing for innovation and excellence. Without his leadership, the company struggled to keep up with the rapidly changing technology industry. Apple's products during this time were often seen as too expensive and not meeting consumer needs as effectively as its competitors. The company's market share and financial performance began to decline. In addition to product challenges, Apple also experienced leadership issues. The company went through several CEOs and other high-level executives, each trying to find a way to restore Apple's success. However, these leadership changes often led to shifts in company strategy and focus, which further complicated Apple's position in the market. Another significant issue was the company's culture. Under Jobs, Apple had been known for its innovative and creative environment. 
But with his departure, the company culture began to change. Apple became more bureaucratic and less risk-taking, which affected its ability to innovate and respond to market changes. Despite these challenges, Apple continued to have a strong brand and a loyal customer base. The company's commitment to quality and design kept it afloat, even as it faced financial and market difficulties. The foundation that Jobs and Wozniak had built in the early days of Apple was still there, but it needed new energy and direction to return to its former glory. The period of Steve Jobs' absence from Apple was a time of reflection and learning for the company. It highlighted the importance of strong leadership, clear vision, and maintaining a culture of innovation. These lessons would become crucial when Jobs returned to Apple and embarked on one of the most remarkable turnarounds in business history. This chapter in the Apple story shows that while a company can face significant challenges, it can also find opportunities to learn and grow, setting the stage for a comeback. In 1996, Apple, facing severe financial troubles and struggling to compete in the market, decided to buy Next, the company Jobs founded after leaving Apple. This acquisition marked Jobs' return to Apple, initially as an advisor. The following year, in 1997, Jobs took a more active role in Apple's operations. He became the interim CEO, a position that he joked was the ICEO. Jobs' return to Apple was not just a homecoming, it was a mission to save the company he loved. He started a comprehensive restructuring of the company to bring it back to profitability and relevance. One of Jobs' first actions was to simplify Apple's product line. At that time, Apple was producing a wide range of computers and other devices, which was confusing to customers and costly to maintain. Jobs focused on streamlining the product range, deciding to produce fewer products, but ensuring they were of high quality and beautifully designed. This strategy went back to Jobs' belief in simplicity and excellence. Another crucial step in the restructuring was forging a partnership with Microsoft, one of Apple's biggest competitors. In a move that surprised the tech world, Jobs announced that Microsoft would invest $150 million in Apple. This partnership also included Microsoft's commitment to continue developing software for Macintosh computers. This was a strategic move to stabilize Apple and reassure consumers and developers about the company's future. Jobs also worked on improving Apple's financial health. He negotiated better deals with suppliers, focused on increasing sales, and made tough decisions to cut costs, including layoffs. These measures were hard but necessary to turn the company around. Under Jobs' leadership, Apple introduced groundbreaking new products. In 1998, Apple released the iMac, an all-in-one computer that featured a unique, colorful design and user-friendly interface. The iMac was a huge success and marked the beginning of Apple's resurgence in the tech market. It was not just a computer, it was a statement of Apple's renewed focus on innovation, design and quality. Jobs' return and the restructuring of Apple marked one of the most remarkable comebacks in business history. He transformed a struggling company into one of the most successful and influential companies in the world. Jobs' vision, leadership and ability to innovate were crucial to this transformation. The story of Jobs' return to Apple is a tale of redemption and resilience. It shows the importance of clear vision, strong leadership, and the willingness to make tough decisions. Jobs' journey with Apple is a testament to the fact that with determination and creativity, it's possible to overcome great challenges and achieve extraordinary success. His return to Apple and the company's turnaround is not just a chapter in the history of technology, it's a story of revival, innovation, and the power of believing in your vision. Chapter 8. Revolutionizing Technology
The first game changer was the iPod, launched in 2001. Before the iPod, listening to music on the go was mostly through portable CD players or MP3 players that were complicated and could hold only a limited number of songs. The iPod, with its sleek design, simple user interface, and the ability to store thousands of songs, transformed the music industry. It fit perfectly with Jobs' philosophy of making technology that was not only functional but also beautiful and easy to use. The iPod became immensely popular, and with the iTunes Store, Apple also revolutionized how music was bought and distributed. In 2007, Apple took another giant leap with the launch of the iPhone. Before the iPhone, mobile phones were primarily for making calls and sending texts, with some additional features like a basic camera or simple games. The iPhone, with its touchscreen interface, internet connectivity, and a multitude of apps changed all that. It was more than a phone. It was a mini-computer in your pocket. The iPhone's impact was profound. It reshaped the smartphone industry and set new standards for mobile computing and communication. Following the success of the iPod and iPhone, Apple introduced the iPad in 2010, Tablets existed before the iPad, but they were not very popular or user-friendly. The iPad, with its large touchscreen, sleek design, and vast array of apps, made tablets accessible and desirable. It found its use in various fields, from education to business to entertainment, further demonstrating Apple's ability to innovate and lead in new technology markets. Each of these products, the iPod, iPhone, and iPad, were not just successful in terms of sales. They created entirely new categories of devices and changed people's lifestyles. They showed how technology could be integrated into everyday life in a seamless and enjoyable way. These products also solidified Apple's reputation as an innovator and leader in the technology industry. Steve Jobs' role in the launch of these products was crucial. His vision, attention to detail, and insistence on design and usability were key to their success. He was not just launching products, he was creating experiences that people loved. Jobs believed that technology should not be intimidating or complicated, it should be intuitive and enriching. The launch of the iPod, iPhone, and iPad is a story of innovation, vision, and impact. It shows how Steve Jobs and Apple did not just keep up with technological trends, they set them. These products changed the way people listened to music, used phones, and interacted with digital content. They are examples of how thinking differently and pushing boundaries can lead to revolutionary changes that impact the world. This chapter in Apple's history is not just about the success of a company, it's about the power of technology to transform lives. Apple's ascent was not just about the products it created, but also about how it created them. Under Jobs' leadership, Apple focused on innovation, quality, and user experience. Every product, from computers to mobile devices, was designed to be not only functional, but also aesthetically pleasing and intuitive to use. This approach set Apple apart from its competitors and attracted a loyal customer base. People didn't just use Apple products, they loved them. The success of Apple's products also led to financial success. The company's revenue and profits soared, making it one of the most valuable companies in the world. This financial strength allowed Apple to invest in research and development, leading to more innovative products and further growth. Another key factor in Apple's ascent was its ecosystem of products and services. With the iTunes Store, the App Store, and later iCloud, Apple created an integrated environment where users could easily buy, store, and manage their digital content across all Apple devices. This ecosystem locked users into the Apple world, making it hard for them to switch to competitors' products. 
It was a brilliant strategy that not only increased sales but also created a more seamless user experience. Apple's ascent in the technology world was also marked by its impact on various industries. The iPod changed the music industry, the iPhone transformed the mobile phone industry, and the iPad created a new category of devices. Apple's products influenced how other companies designed and marketed their products. The technology industry as a whole became more focused on design, user experience, and creating integrated ecosystems. Steve Jobs' role in Apple's ascent was fundamental. His vision for what technology could and should be drove the company's innovation. He was deeply involved in every aspect of product development, from design to marketing. Jobs was not just a CEO. He was the heart and soul of Apple. His passion for excellence and his ability to foresee what customers would want next were key to Apple's success. Apple's ascent in the technology world is a story of how a company can rise to the top through innovation, strong leadership, and a commitment to excellence. It's about how a vision can be turned into reality and how that reality can change the world. Apple's journey under Steve Jobs' leadership is a testament to the power of dreaming big, challenging the status quo, and relentlessly pursuing perfection. It's a story that inspires and teaches us that with the right approach and mindset, anything is possible. Chapter 9 Leadership Style Jobs' approach to leadership was deeply influenced by his belief in the power of vision. He had a clear and compelling vision for Apple and its products, and he inspired his team to pursue that vision with unwavering dedication. Jobs often pushed his team to achieve what seemed impossible, challenging them to go beyond their limits. This sometimes resulted in high pressure and tough working conditions, but it also led to incredible innovation and success. Another key aspect of Jobs' leadership style was his attention to detail. He was involved in every aspect of product development, from the initial concept to the final design. Jobs believed that great products came from understanding and caring about even the smallest details. This meticulous approach set Apple's products apart in terms of quality and design. Jobs was also known for his direct and often blunt communication style. He didn't hesitate to tell someone if he thought their work wasn't good enough. While this could be tough on employees, it also created a culture of excellence and high standards at Apple. Jobs' straightforwardness was balanced by his ability to inspire and motivate. He could articulate his vision in a way that excited and rallied people around a common goal. Innovation was at the heart of Jobs' leadership. He encouraged creative thinking and was always looking for ways to do things differently and better. Jobs wasn't afraid to take risks or to enter new markets. This willingness to innovate and take risks was a key factor in Apple's growth and success. Jobs' approach to management also included creating a work environment that fostered creativity and collaboration. He believed in the importance of having the right team and often said that hiring was one of the most important things a manager does. He looked for people who were not only talented, but also passionate about what they did and could fit into Apple's culture. Steve Jobs' leadership style was unique and not without controversy, but it was undeniably effective. Under his leadership, Apple became one of the most innovative and successful companies in the world. Jobs' approach to leadership and management was a reflection of his personality, intense, passionate, and always striving for perfection. His style shaped Apple's culture and played a crucial role in the company's achievements. Jobs' leadership is a study in how vision, attention to detail, direct communication, innovation, and the right team can combine to create extraordinary success. 
It's a story that not only provides insights into jobs as a leader, but also offers valuable lessons for anyone looking to lead and inspire in any field. Jobs' approach to leadership was heavily influenced by various experiences and interests throughout his life. His early interest in Zen Buddhism, for instance, shaped his emphasis on simplicity and intuition. This influence was evident in Apple's product designs, which were known for their simplicity and elegance. Jobs also drew inspiration from fields outside of technology, such as calligraphy, which influenced his focus on typography and design in Apple's products. Another significant influence was Jobs's drive for perfection, stemming from his belief in the importance of creating products that were not just functional, but also beautiful and easy to use. This approach was partly influenced by his admiration for the craftsmanship of his father, Paul Jobs, a mechanic and carpenter. Jobs' exposure to different cultures, especially his trip to India, also shaped his perspectives on life and business, contributing to his unique leadership style. However, Jobs' leadership style was not without its criticisms. His intense focus and high standards often led to a demanding and high-pressure work environment at Apple. Jobs could be very direct and harsh in his criticism, which some found difficult to work with. This aspect of his leadership style sometimes led to strained relationships with colleagues and employees. Jobs was also criticized for being overly controlling and not always listening to others' opinions. He had a strong vision for Apple and its products, which sometimes meant dismissing ideas that did not align with his vision. This approach led to innovative products, but it also meant that some potentially good ideas were not pursued. Despite these criticisms, Jobs' leadership style had a significant impact on those who worked with him. Many former Apple employees have spoken about how working with Jobs challenged and pushed them to do their best work. His emphasis on design, quality and user experience influenced not just Apple, but the entire technology industry. Jobs' approach to leadership and management was also shaped by his experiences outside of Apple, particularly during his time at Next and Pixar. These experiences broadened his perspectives and skills, which he later applied upon his return to Apple. Steve Jobs' leadership style, with its influences and criticisms, is a key part of his legacy. His approach to leadership was unique and shaped by a wide range of experiences and interests. While he faced criticisms for some of his methods, his impact on Apple and the technology industry is undeniable. Jobs' story is a reminder that leadership can take many forms and that a leader's influence extends beyond their immediate decisions and actions. His leadership style, with its mix of innovation, perfectionism and directness, offers valuable lessons in how vision and passion can drive a company to extraordinary heights, but also highlights the importance of balance and considering the impact of leadership on others. Chapter 10. Personal Life Jobs met his wife, Lorene Powell, in 1989 during a lecture at Stanford Business School where he was speaking. They shared an immediate connection and married in a small ceremony in 1991. Lorene, an MBA graduate from Stanford, was a strong and independent person. She founded a natural foods company and later became involved in philanthropy. Lorene played a significant role in Jobs' life, providing support and stability. Jobs' family life was also marked by his relationship with his children. He had four children, a daughter from an earlier relationship, and three children with Lorene. Jobs was known to be a private person, and he kept his family life out of the public eye as much as possible. However, those close to him noted that he was a devoted father, he tried to spend quality time with his children, taking them on vacations and ensuring he was home for dinner as often as possible, despite his busy schedule. Jobs' family life was not without its complications. 
His first daughter was born when he was young and not yet established. Initially, he denied paternity, a decision he later regretted. As he matured and his life stabilized, he worked to repair and strengthen his relationship with his daughter. This part of his life shows a more complex and human side of jobs, different from his public persona as a technology visionary. Jobs' approach to family life was influenced by his own upbringing. He was adopted as a baby by Paul and Clara Jobs, who raised him in California. His relationship with his adoptive parents was close and loving. They supported his early interest in electronics and provided a stable, nurturing home. Jobs often spoke about how important his parents were in his life and how they shaped who he became. The story of Steve Jobs' family life is a reminder that behind a public figure is a private individual with relationships and responsibilities. It shows a different side of Jobs, one that valued family, personal connections, and the stability they brought to his often turbulent professional life. Jobs' family life, with its joys and challenges, paints a fuller picture of him as a person, not just as a CEO and innovator. It offers a glimpse into the more personal aspects of his life, contributing to our understanding of him as a complete individual, shaped by and shaping the relationships in his life. One of Jobs' most significant personal interests was his passion for design and aesthetics. This was evident in all of Apple's products, known for their sleek, minimalist design and attention to detail, Jobs believed that the design of a product was not just about how it looked but how it functioned. He was greatly influenced by the simplicity and functionality of Zen Buddhism, which he encountered during his trip to India and his study of Eastern philosophies. This influence was reflected in his preference for simple, uncluttered design and intuitive functionality in technology. Jobs also had a keen interest in music, which played a substantial role in his personal and professional life. He was a fan of the Beatles and often referred to them as an inspiration for how he approached business, as a blend of artistry, creativity and commercial success. This passion for music was a driving force behind the creation of the iPod and iTunes, which revolutionized the way music was consumed and distributed. Another significant interest of Jobs was his focus on health and diet. He was known for being a pescatarian, someone who eats fish but no other meat, and often experimented with extreme diets. Jobs believed that a healthy diet was essential for maintaining his energy and creativity. His interest in health extended to practicing meditation, which he found helpful for focus and relaxation. Jobs' personal beliefs were deeply integrated into his leadership style and business practices. He believed in the power of intuition over intellect, a belief that guided many of his business decisions. He often trusted his gut feelings when making decisions, even when they went against conventional wisdom. This approach led to many of Apple's breakthrough products, which were often ahead of their time. Despite his immense success, Jobs maintained a sense of humility and was known for his belief in the importance of staying hungry and foolish. This mantra, which he famously quoted in his Stanford commencement speech, was about maintaining the curiosity and humility of a beginner, regardless of success or expertise. Steve Jobs's personal interests and beliefs were integral to who he was and how he operated in both his personal and professional life. They shaped his approach to business, his interactions with people, and his understanding of what technology could and should be. Jobs was not just a visionary in the field of technology, he was a person with a complex array of interests and beliefs that influenced everything he did. His personal life, with its unique blend of interests and beliefs, offers valuable insights into how individual passions and perspectives can shape a person's approach to life and work. Chapter 11. Health Challenges 
Jobs's battle with cancer was as private as it was intense. Initially, he opted for alternative treatment methods, reflecting his belief in natural and holistic approaches to health. He pursued a special diet and other non-traditional treatments, delaying surgery. This decision was controversial and drew criticism from some. However, it was in line with his personal beliefs and his inclination to follow his own path, even in the face of serious challenges. In 2004, Jobs underwent surgery to remove the tumor in his pancreas. He kept his health issues mostly private, sharing details with only a few close associates and family members. After his surgery, he returned to work at Apple, continuing to lead the company's innovation and product development. Despite his illness, Jobs remained deeply involved in Apple's operations, demonstrating his commitment and resilience. Jobs's battle with cancer brought to light his vulnerabilities and humanized a man who was often seen as a larger-than-life figure. It showed that despite his immense success, he was not immune to life's challenges. This period in his life was marked by a determination to continue working and contributing to the company he loved, even as he faced significant health issues. Throughout his illness, Jobs continued to be a key force at Apple, overseeing the development and launch of revolutionary products like the iPhone and iPad. His ability to stay focused and driven, even while battling cancer, was remarkable. It was a testament to his strength of character and his passion for his work. Jobs' health struggles also had an impact on Apple and its employees. It brought to the forefront the importance of leadership and the challenge of managing a company in the face of uncertainty. It also highlighted the deep connection Jobs had with Apple, a company he co-founded and helped grow into a global technology leader. Steve Jobs' battle with pancreatic cancer is a poignant chapter in his life story. It reveals a side of Jobs that was often overshadowed by his professional achievements. His fight against cancer, along with his approach to it, underscores the complexities and challenges of dealing with serious health issues. It shows how personal beliefs can shape decisions in times of crisis and the impact these decisions can have. Jobs' journey through his illness is a powerful reminder of the human aspect behind one of the most influential figures in the world of technology. It adds depth to our understanding of his life and provides a perspective on how personal challenges can intersect with and influence a public life. Despite his illness, Jobs continued to work with remarkable dedication he remained deeply involved in Apple's major projects, overseeing product development and company strategy. However, his health struggles sometimes necessitated stepping away from day-to-day -day operations. This situation led to speculation and concern about the future leadership of Apple. Jobs' health became a matter of public interest, highlighting the extent to which his personal well-being was tied to perceptions of Apple's stability and future success. Jobs' illness also brought changes to his personal life. It made him reflect on his priorities and the finite nature of life. In his public appearances, particularly in his famous Stanford commencement speech in 2005, he spoke candidly about death being life's great change agent. This perspective showed a more reflective and philosophical side of Jobs, contrasting with his public persona as a relentless and demanding innovator. The impact of Jobs' health on his work was also evident in the products Apple released during this period. Products like the iPhone and iPad, developed under his guidance, were not just technological achievements, but also reflected Jobs' understanding of what truly mattered to users, simplicity, elegance and intuitiveness. His vision for these products was imbued with his belief in making the most of one's time and creating something that makes a difference. On a personal level, Jobs' health challenges seemed to deepen his appreciation for relationships and life outside work. 
While he always maintained a private personal life, those close to him observed a more reflective and thoughtful individual. His illness brought a new dimension to his understanding of life's fragility, which in turn influenced how he interacted with those around him. Jobs's health journey also had a significant impact on Apple's culture. It brought a sense of urgency and a focus on continuing Jobs's legacy of innovation. The company faced the challenge of ensuring its continued success while preparing for a future without its visionary leader. This period tested Apple's resilience and highlighted the importance of the team and culture Jobs had built. Steve Jobs' health challenges and their impact on his work and life add a deeply human aspect to his story. They show a man facing his vulnerabilities while continuing to drive forward the company he co-founded. His journey through illness and its effects on his approach to life and work is a testament to his strength and resilience. It offers a perspective A on how personal challenges can profoundly influence one's professional life and legacy. This chapter in Jobs' life is not just about the struggles he faced, but also about how he navigated them with determination and a deepened understanding of life's priorities. Chapter 12 Legacy and Influence Jobs' contribution to technology began with the founding of Apple and the creation of the Apple I and II computers. These early innovations set the stage for personal computing, making technology accessible to a broader audience. Jobs' vision was to create computers that were not just functional machines, but user-friendly tools that could enhance creativity and productivity. This approach was revolutionary at the time, and paved the way for the widespread adoption of personal computers. Perhaps Jobs' most significant contribution to technology was the development of the Macintosh. Introduced in 1984, the Macintosh was the first mass-market computer with a graphical user interface and a mouse. This innovation made computers much easier to use and more intuitive, opening up computing to an even wider audience and changing the landscape of personal technology. In addition to his contributions to personal computing, Jobs also revolutionized other technology sectors. The introduction of the iPod changed the way people listened to and interacted with music, transforming the music industry. The iPhone, launched in 2007, was a breakthrough in mobile technology, combining a phone, internet browser, and music player in a single device with a groundbreaking touchscreen interface. The iPad, introduced in 2010, created a new category of tablet computing, influencing the development of portable digital devices. Jobs' influence on design is equally significant. He had a deep appreciation for simplicity and elegance, which was reflected in all of Apple's products. Jobs believed that design was not just about how a product looked, but how it worked. He was involved in every aspect of design, from the product's physical appearance to its user interfacer. This attention to detail and commitment to excellence set a new standard in product design, influencing not just technology products, but the broader world of design. Jobs' legacy in technology and design is not just about the products he helped create, but also about his approach to innovation. He was known for his ability to foresee and act on future trends, often taking risks to develop products that consumers didn't even know they needed yet. This forward-thinking approach has inspired countless entrepreneurs and designers to think differently and push the boundaries of what is possible. Steve Jobs' contributions to technology and design have fundamentally changed how we live, work, and communicate. His legacy is evident in the ubiquitous presence of Apple products and their influence on the industry. Jobs' journey was about more than just creating products. It was about creating experiences that blend technology and design in ways that are both functional and beautiful. His impact on technology and design will be felt for generations, 
marking him as one of the most influential figures in the modern technological era. Jobs's impact on Apple is profound and multifaceted. He was not just the co-founder and visionary behind many of the company's most successful products. He was also instrumental in creating Apple's unique corporate culture. Jobs instilled a deep commitment to innovation, design excellence, and user experience in Apple. This culture has helped the company continue to develop groundbreaking products and maintain its position as a leader in the tech industry, even after his passing. Under Jobs' leadership, Apple developed a series of revolutionary products that have had a lasting influence on the tech world. The iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers didn't just meet existing consumer needs. They created new markets and transformed how people interact with technology. Jobs' ability to anticipate and shape consumer desires has become a blueprint for innovation in the tech industry. Jobs also had a significant impact on the business model of the tech industry. His focus on creating an ecosystem of products and services, where each element complements and enhances the others, revolutionized how tech companies approach product development and customer engagement. This model has been emulated by numerous companies seeking to replicate Apple's success. Beyond specific products and business strategies, Jobs' broader philosophy about technology and design has deeply influenced the industry. He believed that technology should be intuitive, accessible, and beautifully designed. This philosophy changed the way tech companies approach product design and user experience, placing greater emphasis on aesthetics and ease of use. Jobs' legacy also includes his approach to leadership and innovation. He was known for his demanding standards and relentless pursuit of perfection. This approach drove Apple to achieve high levels of quality and innovation, setting a standard for the entire industry. Jobs's focus on thinking differently and challenging the status quo has inspired a generation of entrepreneurs and tech professionals. Steve Jobs' lasting impact on Apple and the tech world is a testament to his extraordinary vision and leadership. He transformed Apple from a struggling company into one of the most valuable and influential in the world. His influence extends beyond the products he created to the way technology is integrated into our lives. Jobs' legacy is not just about the success of Apple, but about how he reshaped our relationship with technology. He showed that technology could be more than just a tool. It could be an integral and enriching part of everyday life. His impact on the tech world will be felt for many years to come, marking him as one of the most significant figures in the history of technology. Chapter 13. Apple After Jobs The transition after Jobs' passing was handled with a sense of respect and continuity. Tim Cook, who had been serving as Apple's chief operating officer and had been handpicked by Jobs as his successor, took over as CEO. Cook had been with Apple since 1998, and was instrumental in improving the company's supply chain and operations. His leadership style was different from Jobs. Cook was known for being more collaborative and less confrontational. However, he shared Jobs' commitment to innovation and excellence. One of the first challenges Apple faced in the post-Jobs era was maintaining its reputation for innovation and quality. There was widespread speculation about whether Apple could continue to be a leader in the tech industry without Jobs' unique vision and leadership. The company needed to prove that it could still bring groundbreaking products to market and stay ahead in a rapidly evolving industry. Under Cook's leadership, Apple continued to release successful products, including new models of the iPhone, iPad and Mac. The company also ventured into new product categories, such as wearable technology with the Apple Watch and home technology with the HomePod. These product launches were critical in demonstrating that Apple still had a strong pipeline of innovation. 
Another aspect of the transition was preserving and evolving the culture Jobs had built. Apple's culture of design excellence, attention to detail, and innovation was deeply tied to Jobs' personal philosophy. Maintaining this culture while adapting to a new leadership style was essential for the company's continued success. The transition period was also marked by Apple's increased focus on services, diversifying its revenue streams beyond just hardware sales. This strategic shift included expanding services like iCloud, Apple Music, and the App Store, and introducing new services like Apple TV Plus and Apple Arcade. This move was part of Apple's adaptation to changing market dynamics and consumer behaviors. Steve Jobs' passing marked the end of an era for Apple, but the transition after his death showed the resilience and strength of the company he co-founded. Apple's ability to continue innovating and growing in the post-Jobs era is a testament to the strong foundation he built and the vision he instilled in the company. The transition period was not just about coping with loss, it was about embracing change and continuing a legacy of innovation and excellence. It demonstrated that while Jobs was an irreplaceable figure, the principles and values he embedded in Apple would endure, guiding the company into the future. Under the leadership of CEO Tim Cook, Apple's direction saw a blend of maintaining the core values established by Jobs while also forging new paths. Cook's leadership style, more collaborative and less showy than Jobs, brought a different tone to Apple. He emphasized the importance of teamwork and inclusivity within the company, which helped to maintain morale and drive innovation. One of the significant changes under Cook's leadership was the expansion of Apple's product line and services. While continuing to update and improve its mainstays like the iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers, Apple also ventured into new territories. The launch of the Apple Watch marked Apple's entry into the wearable technology market, and it quickly became a leader in that space. Apple also introduced the HomePod, entering the smart home market. Another notable shift in Apple's direction was the increased focus on services. Recognizing the changing landscape of the technology industry, Apple invested heavily in developing and expanding its range of services. This included enhancing existing services like iCloud and Apple Music, as well as introducing new ones like Apple TV+, a streaming service competing in the digital content market, and Apple Arcade, a subscription service for mobile games. This shift not only diversified Apple's revenue streams, but also helped to reduce its reliance on hardware sales. Sustainability and social responsibility became more prominent under Cook's leadership. Apple made significant strides in reducing its environmental impact, aiming for all its products and operations to be carbon neutral. The company also focused on privacy and security, positioning itself as a protector of user data in a time when digital privacy concerns are increasingly at the forefront of consumer consciousness. Under new leadership, Apple also continued to prioritize innovation. The company's research and development efforts led to improvements in existing products and the exploration of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and augmented reality. This ongoing commitment to innovation ensured that Apple remained at the cutting edge of the tech industry. The direction Apple took under Tim Cook's leadership demonstrates the company's ability to adapt and evolve while staying true to its foundational values. Cook's Apple was one that respected its past, but was not afraid to look to the future. This period in Apple's history showed that while Jobs' vision and leadership style were integral to its success, the company's strength also lay in its ability to change and grow. Apple's journey under new leadership is a testament to the enduring legacy of Steve Jobs and the robust corporate culture he built.
It illustrates how a company can honor its past while boldly stepping into the future, remaining a dominant force in the ever-changing world of technology. Chapter 14. Inspirational Quotes. One of his most iconic quotes is, Stay hungry, stay foolish. This quote from his 2005 Stanford commencement speech encapsulates Jobs' philosophy of life. It encourages a perpetual state of learning and openness to new experiences, urging people not to settle into complacency. Another profound Jobs quote is, Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. This quote emphasizes the importance of passion and fulfillment in one's career. Jobs believed that loving your work is essential for achieving success and satisfaction. Jobs also said, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. This quote reflects his belief in the power of innovation as the key differentiator in business and technology. For Jobs, being innovative was not just about being different. It was about leading the way and setting new standards. The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do, is another memorable quote from Jobs. This quote celebrates the power of belief and ambition. It encourages individuals to challenge the status quo and dare to dream big, resonating with entrepreneurs and creative minds worldwide. Jobs also had a unique perspective on failure, as reflected in his quote, I'm convinced that about half of what separates successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. This quote underscores the importance of resilience and persistence in the face of challenges and setbacks. Jobs himself faced numerous failures and challenges throughout his career, but continued to persevere. Another insightful quote is, Design is not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. This quote reflects Jobs' holistic view of design, which goes beyond aesthetics to include functionality and user experience. For Jobs, good design was about creating products that were not only visually appealing, but also intuitive and easy to use. Steve Jobs' quotes are more than just words. They are insights into his vision and principles. They reflect his unconventional thinking, his relentless pursuit of excellence, and his deep understanding of what drives innovation and success. These quotes continue to inspire and guide those who seek to make a mark in their fields, reminding us that with passion, perseverance, and a willingness to think differently, anything is possible. Jobs' words remain a beacon, encouraging current and future generations to envision and create a better world. Stay hungry, stay foolish, perhaps one of Jobs' most famous quotes, is a call to never stop learning and growing. It suggests that we should always retain a sense of curiosity and willingness to take risks, just like a beginner or a fool who is not afraid to try new things. This mindset was a driving force in Jobs' life, pushing him to constantly innovate and challenge the status quo. The quote, Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do, emphasizes the importance of passion in one's career. Jobs believed that true satisfaction and exceptional achievements come from doing work that you are passionate about. This belief was evident in the way he approached his work at Apple, constantly striving for excellence because he loved what he did. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower, reflects Jobs' belief in the power of innovation to create change and establish leadership. This quote underscores the importance of thinking differently and being bold in order to lead in any field. For Jobs, innovation was not just about new ideas, but about creating new value and setting new directions.
The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world, are the ones who do, is a tribute to the power of belief and ambition. Jobs himself was one of these crazy people who believed he could change the world, and he did. This quote is an inspiration to dream big and not be limited by what others think is possible. Jobs's perspective on failure and perseverance is captured in his quote, I'm convinced that about half of what separates successful entrepreneurs from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. This quote highlights the importance of resilience and the willingness to keep going despite challenges and setbacks. It reflects Jobs' own journey, which was marked by notable failures, but his perseverance ultimately led to extraordinary success. Finally, design is not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works, encapsulates Jobs' holistic view of design. This quote reflects his belief that good design encompasses both form and function. It's about creating products that are not only visually appealing but also efficient and user-friendly. This philosophy was at the heart of every Apple product. Each of these quotes from Steve Jobs carries deep meanings and insights. They are not just advice for business or innovation, but for life itself. They inspire us to find our passion, to persevere, to innovate, and to see the world differently. Jobs' words continue to influence and motivate people around the world, reminding us that our beliefs, attitudes, and approaches can shape our destinies and impact the world. Chapter 15. Reflections on Innovation at the heart of Jobs' approach to innovation was his ability to envision the future and act on it. He didn't just respond to market demands, he anticipated or created them. Jobs believed in making products that people didn't even know they needed yet, and once they were introduced, they became indispensable. This forward-thinking approach led to the development of groundbreaking products like the iPhone and iPad, which created entirely new categories in technology. Jobs also had a unique perspective on the intersection of technology and the humanities. He believed that the best products arose from the intersection of technology and the arts. This philosophy was evident in Apple's products, which were not only technologically advanced, but also beautifully designed and user-friendly. The importance Jobs placed on design and aesthetics set Apple's products apart in a market often focused primarily on technical specifications. Another aspect of Jobs' approach to innovation was his insistence on simplicity and user-centric design. He believed that products should be intuitive and easy to use. This belief drove Apple to create devices with simple, clean interfaces that hid the complex technology behind them. Jobs' focus on the user experience made technology accessible to a broader audience, changing the way people interacted with devices. Jobs' methodology also involved a combination of creativity, intuition, and a willingness to take risks. He was known for his ability to connect seemingly unrelated ideas to create something new, this creative process was coupled with an intuition that often led him to make bold decisions that defied conventional wisdom. Jobs wasn't afraid to venture into uncharted territory or to change course if he believed it was the right thing to do. Collaboration played a significant role in Jobs' approach to innovation. While he was the driving force behind Apple's products, he also relied on the talents and expertise of his team. Jobs encouraged a culture of collaboration and excellence at Apple, pushing his team to think differently and to challenge their own assumptions. Lastly, Jobs' approach to innovation was marked by his relentless pursuit of perfection. He paid attention to every detail, believing that the quality of the final product was in the details that others might overlook. This pursuit of perfection often led to delays and additional costs. But for Jobs, the end result justified the means. Steve Jobs' approach to innovation was a combination of vision, creativity, simplicity, 
intuition, risk-taking, collaboration, and perfectionism. This approach not only revolutionized the tech industry, but also left a lasting impact on how products are developed and marketed. Jobs' innovative methods continue to influence entrepreneurs and innovators worldwide, making his approach a subject of study and admiration in the realms of business and technology. Jobs' impact on the tech landscape began with the personal computer revolution. The Apple I and II were among the first computers accessible to a broad audience, breaking the barrier that computers were only for businesses or tech enthusiasts. This democratization of technology was a significant shift, making computing a part of everyday life for millions of people. With the introduction of the Macintosh, Jobs changed the tech landscape again by popularizing the graphical user interface, GUI, and the mouse. This innovation made computers much more user-friendly and intuitive, setting a new standard for personal computing. The Macintosh's emphasis on design and user experience influenced the entire computer industry, leading to a shift in how computers were developed and marketed. The launch of the iPod under Jobs' leadership transformed the music industry. The combination of the iPod and iTunes created a new way for people to consume and purchase music, leading to the decline of physical music formats like CDs. This innovation also set the stage for the modern era of digital content distribution. Perhaps the most significant change Jobs brought to the tech landscape was the introduction of the iPhone. The iPhone was a breakthrough in mobile technology, combining a phone, an internet browser, and a music player in a single device. Its touchscreen interface and app ecosystem created a new paradigm for mobile computing, inspiring a generation of smartphones that followed. The iPhone fundamentally changed how people communicate, access information, and use digital services on the go. The iPad, another innovation under Jobs, opened up new possibilities in tablet computing. Before the iPad, tablets were a niche product. The iPad's design, functionality, and marketing made it a mainstream device, finding applications in education, business, and entertainment. It paved the way for the widespread adoption of tablets, and further blurred the lines between computers and mobile devices. Beyond specific products, Jobs' impact on the tech landscape included a focus on integrating technology seamlessly into daily life. He envisioned technology not as an end in itself, but as a tool to enhance human creativity, productivity, and communication. This vision influenced how technology is developed and perceived today. Steve Jobs' changes to the tech landscape were not just about introducing new products. They were about changing perceptions and interactions with technology. His emphasis on design, user experience, and simplicity in technology set new standards in the industry. Jobs' legacy in the tech landscape is a testament to his belief that technology when thoughtfully and beautifully designed, can profoundly impact society and individual lives. His innovations continue to shape the way technology evolves, illustrating the lasting impact of his vision and creativity. Chapter 16 Conclusion Born in 1955, Jobs' journey began with his adoption by Paul and Clara Jobs, who raised him in California. His early interests in electronics and mechanics, influenced by his father, laid the foundation for his future. His path was unconventional. He dropped out of college but continued to educate himself, especially in design and aesthetics. This unique blend of technology and artistry became a defining feature of his career. Jobs' first major achievement was co-founding Apple Computer Inc. in 1976 with Steve Wozniak. They started in a garage, but their vision was vast. 
the Apple I and II were among the first computers accessible to the masses, igniting the personal computer revolution. However, it was the Macintosh, introduced in 1984, that truly changed the computing world with its graphical user interface and mouse, setting new standards in usability. Jobs faced setbacks too, most notably being ousted from Apple in 1985. Yet this setback was a prelude to further achievements. He founded Next, a company that, while not commercially successful, was innovative in its software. Jobs also invested in Pixar Animation Studios, which revolutionized animation with hits like Toy Story. In 1997, Jobs returned to a struggling Apple, marking the beginning of an extraordinary turnaround. Under his leadership, Apple released groundbreaking products like the iPod, iPhone and iPad, reshaping not just the tech industry, but also impacting global culture. These products were more than technological advances. They were intersections of technology, design and user experience, hallmarks of Jobs' approach. Jobs' leadership style was a crucial aspect of his success. Known for his perfectionism, intense focus and visionary thinking, he pushed Apple to innovate and exceed expectations. His philosophy that design and functionality are inseparable influenced a generation of products and designers. Beyond his professional achievements, Jobs' personal life was a tapestry of challenges and growth. His initial denial and later reconciliation with his daughter from an early relationship showed his more human side. His marriage to Laureen Powell and his role as a father added depth to his persona. Steve Jobs' life was marked by a constant pursuit of excellence and a belief in the power of technology to improve lives. His story is an inspiration, showing how passion, innovation and resilience can lead to extraordinary achievements. Jobs changed the way we interact with technology, leaving a legacy that continues to influence the tech world and beyond. His life story is not just a chronicle of success, but a testament to the impact one person can have on the world through vision, determination and creativity. Jobs' legacy is most visible in the continued success and innovation of Apple. The company remains a leader in the tech industry, building on the foundations he laid. The principles of design excellence, innovation and user centricity that he championed continue to be at the core of Apple's product development. The iPhone, iPad, Mac and other Apple products are testaments to Jobs' vision and philosophy, combining aesthetics, functionality and an intuitive user experience. Beyond Apple, Jobs' influence extends across the entire tech industry. His emphasis on design and usability set new standards for technology products. The user-friendly interfaces, sleek designs, and attention to detail that Jobs popularized are now expected features in consumer electronics. His approach to product development, which involves integrating technology with elements of art and humanity, continues to inspire and guide designers and innovators. Jobs' impact is also evident in the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship that he embodied. His journey from starting Apple in a garage to building it into one of the world's most valuable companies is a source of inspiration for entrepreneurs worldwide. He demonstrated that with passion, perseverance and a willingness to challenge conventional wisdom, it's possible to bring transformative ideas to life. Moreover, Jobs' legacy is reflected in the way technology has become integrated into our daily lives. He envisioned technology not as an end in itself, but as a tool to enrich human experiences. The products he helped create have changed the way we communicate, work, play and live. They have become integral parts of our lives, influencing everything from entertainment to education to business. Jobs' personal story, with its highs and lows, also contributes to his enduring legacy his resilience in overcoming setbacks, his relentless pursuit of perfection, 
and his ability to reinvent himself and his company serve as valuable lessons in personal and professional growth. His candid reflections on life, work and mortality, especially in his later years, add a philosophical dimension to his legacy, encouraging us to think about the bigger picture in our lives and endeavors. Steve Jobs' legacy is multidimensional. It encompasses groundbreaking products, a distinctive approach to business and design, and a personal story of resilience and vision. His contributions continue to shape industries and influence the way we think about technology and innovation. Jobs' life and work serve as a beacon inspiring current and future generations to dream big, pursue their passions, and think differently. His legacy endures not just in the products he helped create, but in the wider impact he had on the world, redefining the intersection of technology and humanity.